But let's start with the first conversation of the day. Uh, and it has to do, like I said, with uh, the nomination process or the claiming of mutual fund units of a deceased individual. Let me introduce my guest for the day. We've got Santosh Navlani, who's the Chief Operating Officer of ET Money. Thank you so much, Santosh, as always, for taking the time. I want to start with a broad question. And I think we've uh, spoken about this over a period of time. It's very important to have nominations in place, to have a will in place. Is it really very, very complicated when these things are not done? And then we'll get into the various things that the claimant needs to be, pay attention to. Yes, yeah, so uh, Alex, uh, I, I there is no way we can say it is unimportant or uh, it requires any kind of stress uh, on stress on the fact that it is the most important aspect of your investments in life. Uh, most of us, or almost everybody, invests money for a better future, not just for our own selves as investors, but also for our family's uh, uh, future. And many times we also plan. Uh, uh, enough social security in our own way for the family uh, uh, while we're alive uh, as investors uh, for our family. And one of the biggest thing that you give back to your family while going and, and the inevitable event of a death is, uh, is the wealth you create for yourself uh, to be passed on to family. And if you don't provide any kind of way how to claim that, uh, then all the hard work that you did your entire life for earning money and also growing that money goes for a waste. So uh, it is the most important aspect, in my opinion, uh, to really ensure that your investments are having clarity on nomination, legal years, or uh, succession of those investments is most important aspect uh, before uh, you even start making investments. Uh, I, I cannot really stress uh, more importantly, I can probably bring in a, uh, you know, a news piece which came about uh, six or eight months ago. Uh, I, I remember reading it. Some 82,000 crore worth of uh, money is lying into bank accounts, mutual funds, life insurance policies, PF accounts, completely unclaimed. And uh, the way that this unclaimed number comes in is because nobody has been active on those investments or coming to claim that money. That means it is lying unused and maybe more than more quantum is possible, which is lying unclaimed. And it's, 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 a, it's a disservice to somebody who invested or saved their hard earned money uh, that her, his or her family cannot take benefit, benefit out of it. So I would say that it is the most important aspect. I cannot stress anything beyond this. But even Santosh, if there is a nomination, if the investor has been diligent and if, for example, they have a joint account holder, so in my case, my wife is the joint account holder, or if you have your nominations in place, uh, it is the onus of the claimant to make the claim, right? So what do you need to know at the start, at the onset, are there different types of claimants? Yeah, so the first thing that you uh, kind of, you know, uh, as an investor need to do is uh, pass on adequate, adequate information or almost all information about investments to your family members so that they actually know what to claim uh, if and when an event uh, uh, happens of a death in the family. So the first thing is knowing that where the money has been invested or lying or saved for the future of the family. Uh, that's number one. And uh, second aspect is the, the moment you know that you would know that if uh, what, which investments has a nomination already done, which, which investments actually have no nomination, where the joint account lies. So uh, there are different kind of uh, uh, you know, processes uh, involved depending on who is claiming money. So uh, many, uh, almost every mutual fund company in the country allows uh, investors to invest in uh, as different, different individuals together. It's like there is a solo account, so I can be a sole investor in a folio. Uh, there can be possibility of joint ownership of the uh, of the units that we have. So there is a second first holder, second holder, and up to three holders are possible in a mutual fund folio. So if you are a joint holder in a folio and uh, uh, the primary holder or one of the holders is no more, it's a different process altogether. And if you uh, uh, are somebody who is uh, a claimant as a legal here in the absence of no nomination in the folio, that that's a different process. So depending on who is claiming money? There is different process. Are you are you claiming money as a nominee 
of a single or a joint holder folio? Are you claiming money as a nominee of a single holder folio? And if you're claiming uh, money as a joint holder who is a surviving member of the uh, uh, folio holders, uh, the process will be different in that case. Okay, so let's talk about each one of these uh, processes as you've uh, you know in enumerated them. Let's start with the joint account holders. And you said very clearly that there are up to three that are allowed. Now, yeah. uh, one would assume, or rather, I think this is a common doubt that people would have, that if you are a joint account holder and if you have access to the account, then does it automatically mean that those units are yours? Or is there a process of transferring units from an account holder to another if you are joint account holders? So, uh, uh, basically, uh, the claiming procedure uh, of money, uh, uh, Alex, involves something called as transmission of units in the name. So, uh, uh, when you are uh, approaching the mutual fund company to claim uh, the money as a as a respective, uh, you know, uh, claimant, uh, then you have to initiate the process of transmission of units uh, uh, as, as a thing. So if you are somebody who is a joint holder in a folio, uh, uh, then you may have access completely to the money. You may be able to transact further, even if the primary or secondary holder uh, is absent. Uh, uh, but it's always better to uh, you know, update the records of the mutual company because uh, if one of the joint holders is no more there, uh, tomorrow uh, the other holder may not also be there. So it's always better to kind of you know reorganize or organize their investments better for the for the sake of uh, future itself. Uh, so if you're a joint holder, uh, then uh, there are possibilities whether you are a surviving member of a joint account or you are a surviving member of any minor survivor account. So the, in mutual funds, when you are investing as a joint holder, there are two kinds of accounts. You are any minor survivor. That means uh, you, both or any one uh, of the uh, uh, members in the folio can actually transact. But if, you, if the folio is joint where both the investors are required to sign each document then the fact is after one of the investor is deceased you cannot operate the account that means you will have to initiate the transmission process uh, uh, with due course now the process there is you have to uh, 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 kind of you know apply for transmission of units by requesting through a letter or the transmission form uh, you have to provide the uh, uh, you know death certificate which is notarized uh, 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 by by the kind of competing authority to be able to prove that there is a, a valid uh, uh, kind of uh, valid death has happened of uh, of the disease investor and third uh, third thing being that uh, the updated information about the KYC documents uh, are uh, to prove that you are the uh, uh, kind of, you know, the surviving member there. So if you provide all these documents, then the transmission process initiates uh, uh, into your name. Typically, it takes 30 days for a mutual fund company to process all these things uh, into your name. So if, uh, I think the, the simplest case is if you are a joint holder in a, in the folio, it makes life far, far faster compared to other cases. Uh, if you are uh, somebody who is a nominee in the, in the, in the uh, 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 joint or a single folio holding, you again have to submit the same kind of documents, just that uh, there can be complication that a will has been returned. So in the absence of a will, uh, the nomination always uh, uh, kind of, you know, is very simple to execute. But if uh, uh, there is conflict in a valid will, which has been written by the investor before the death and, and, and what is mentioned nomination, it can create some kind of complication. So uh, one has to ensure that uh, uh, the records of mutual fund company as nominees and the records uh, of the investor uh, investors will actually mention same names and same proportion. Otherwise it can create some kind of conflict in the family members itself. Let's talk about those two aspects though. Uh, on the one hand, you have nominees and on the other hand, you have legal heirs. Um, let's first talk about nominees because there are various uh, layers to this as well, right? Uh, and another fact that just occurred to me, Santosh, is that uh, it would be in the best interest of even joint account holders to update the system uh, because when it comes to uh, booking the profits, uh, there has to be uh, the element of capital gains or capital uh, losses uh, and that would complicate matters because a deceased individual's taxes would then uh, raise questions, right? So let's talk about nominees and what a person needs to bear in mind if they are in fact a nominee. 
So, uh, uh, Alex, fortunately, when it comes to transmission of units, uh, there is no element of capital gains there. So, what happens is, if the uh, uh, assets uh, or the investments are getting transferred into the name of the nominee, uh, then uh, there is no capital gains or any kind of taxation involved into the process because it's the rightful ownership getting transferred as inheritance to the nominee in that sense. Uh, so there's no capital gains involved at the time of transfer. Of course, when you when the nominee decides to sell the investments, then the same laws of taxation gets applied because uh, uh, the the date of transmission has no uh, impact on the purchase cost. But uh, what happens is uh, the uh, uh, transmission date uh, will have a mention of what date the actual units which are getting transferred into the name of nominee were purchased. So uh, the taxation will be as per the original date of purchase and not actually uh, when it got transferred in the name of nominee. So taxation actually is quite uh, clear on that side. It's not something which is going to create hazards in the no name of, in the life of the nominee. Uh, uh, the the aspect where the joint owner uh, has to take care of uh, you know updating the records is uh, at the time of modification of records the joint holder needs to prove that uh, the the uh, uh, deceased investor is no more there through the notarized death certificate and the uh, 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 other document which are required to yeah. submit uh, the at that point of time the nomination can be changed into a, a different person altogether. Uh, because the the plan of the investments uh, or the uh, the end beneficial investment may change at the time of this updation. So uh, that's the thing that the joint holder has to keep in mind, or the nomination who is getting uh, modified is has to keep in mind. Absolutely. I want to also talk about what happens in the event where you don't have a joint holder and you don't have a nominee uh, and you have legal heirs, because the Indian system is very clear in that your legal heirs uh, get an equal share of whatever is left behind if there is no clear will. So let's talk about when you have a will and when you don't have a will and how a legal heir can claim units from a mutual fund scheme. Sure, so uh, uh, let's, let's tackle both the cases separately when you have a will and we don't have a will, Alex. So when one has done a will before, uh, kind of, you know, before the uneventful uh, death of the investor, uh, the a will uh, or, a, or a registered will has a, a higher priority in dictating who, who gets the uh, rightful ownership of the units of the mutual funds. So if there are uh, uh, kind of in a conflict in what was mentioned in the uh, folio uh, uh, a nomination and what is mentioned in the uh, will or the registered will of the disease investor, uh, the, uh, the name mentioned in the will will take a uh, precedence and the ownership will be decided according to that. If uh, uh, the will is not there, then nomination gets priority and nomination in mutual funds uh, uh, is allowed up to up to three nominations and you can specify the percentage of nominee one, nominee two, nominee three, depending on, so for example, if an uh, investor actually says that I want to give a ownership of 25% to my parents, uh, uh, each of them and 50% to my spouse, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, or divide between spouse and children, then the rightful mention of the percentage allocation will get distributed between the uh, nomination. Now, if uh, it is uh, 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 will uh, records are going to take a precedence over the what is mentioned in the in the nominee uh, nomination form, then uh, uh, the legal hears will have to prove uh, uh, by actually submitting a indemnity bond that they are the legal heirs and uh, uh, they the mutual fund company's responsibility will end after transfer of the ownership to the uh, uh, legal heirs and from there on the legal heirs will bear the responsibility if somebody else approaches mutual company onto the uh, for claiming of the uh, units uh, they also have to submit a uh, affidavit that they prove their identity to the mutual fund company and of course uh, there has to be uh, 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 the uh, copies of the uh, registered will or the success, succession certificate along with the debt certificate of the disease investor to be able to claim those amounts. So uh, uh, I think it's it's all very clear. Of course, it's not common knowledge to 
a lot of investors, but this is all specified by law and mutual fund companies. So it's, it's a crystal clear process that people can actually follow. Just that the claimants uh, in that sense, a nominee needs to be aware that there is money to go and claim. Otherwise, what we read is 82,000 crores unclaimed money lying in the uh, financial ecosystem of India actually keeps increasing otherwise. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better. Uh, and in fact, uh, therefore, it might make sense on a periodic basis. Every quarter, for example, if you are responsible for your investments uh, to tell your spouse or tell your financial dependents, keep a, a notepad or maybe just send a mail uh, of uh, the investments that you are making and uh, ensure that they're aware of what you're doing for them, because ultimately that is exactly what you are doing. You're safeguarding their financial future. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.